Hello everybody, this is Laura Susan Johnson with Period Pieces, and today I'm going to do the first of a sub-series called Based on a True Story. This true story I'm going to tackle is Everest. I just saw it tonight, and I loved it. It was very sad at the end, very tearjerker. Uh, if you're not into tear jerkers or tragic stories, um, probably wouldn't recommend it. But I've been talking to friends online for months, and they've been telling me you really have to see it. You really have to see it. And I do, I do enjoy uh, what do you call it? Docudramas, I guess, documentary style dramas or whatever, or based on true stories. Um, I just, uh, I was blown away by how amazingly filmed this was. Amazingly filmed, amazingly, um, cinema cinematography, the beautiful locations, the, I don't know, it's just, it was just, I'm kind of speechless right now, I just... I just got done watching it about a half hour ago, and um, it really, really struck a chord in me. The villages in Nepal that are up, you know, upwards of 10,000, maybe 15,000 feet elevation are so beautiful to behold, and... Um, the cast was great. Now, Jason Clark, this I liked him in. I did not like him in Terminator Genesis, but this was a great movie. And then he gave a wonderful performance, made me cry. So, hands, hands down, once and for all, like I've said a million times, I have nothing against any cast member of Terminator Genesis. I just think it was a stupid movie, a stupid idea. If they had to make a fifth sequel, why not make a whole different story set into the future war or something and make it blackened rather than deserty like T. Salvation did? But anyway, getting back to Everest, uh, it stars Jason Clark. His wife uh, is portrayed by Kira Knightley, and she's pregnant. Uh, it also has uh, Emily Watson, great actress. Josh Brolin, uh, Sam, oh god, what's his name? He was in, there's two Terminator alumni in this movie, uh, uh, Jason Clark, of course, and then Sam, is it Sam Huntington? Did I name, oh yeah, and of course, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. It's this, you know, based on that very famous case in 1996 of this party that went up to Everest to get to the summit and uh, how they got caught by a big storm and tragically a lot of them didn't make it down. They suffered immensely with altitude sickness, with a lack of oxygen, with not not understanding that, you know, storms can arise extremely abruptly, you know, basically that high of an altitude, the weather is very unpredictable. And uh, the, main, the main or the lead character is, the, is uh, Rob, who is portrayed by um, Jason Clark. Let me just tell you that it's a beautiful story. It's a sad story. It's a tearjerker. It mainly just, the, the whole story, it's quite a long movie, but it's not, it never drags. It's, basically the whole plot is that this big expedition party gets together. There's like two parties and then they join together at one point. They, uh, you know, make their way up from camp to camp to get themselves acclimated to the altitudes and how to climb the ice, how to use the ice tools, how to cross bridges of, you know, ladder-type bridges and things like that. 
horizontal ladders, I guess you could say, and um, they they just they begin to encounter bad things happening. Basically, as soon as they reach the summit, you know, and do what they came to do, it's kind of like it's a sad kind of a thing. It's a it's the kind of thing that you'll either feel bad for them or you'll say they brought it on themselves or both. I kind of said both. They brought it on themselves. Was it really worth, you know, a 20 minutes of, hey, we made it. Let's put our little flags and our little trophies up here. Everybody know will know we made it up to the tallest mountain in the world. And yeah, whoop de doo the air is so thin up there, you can't breathe without oxygen. The weather's completely unpredictable. What is so great about what you just did? All the lives you risk? It's just crazy. And yet at the same time, you do care about the characters, and you feel bad when they begin to die of the elements, of the cold, of the the storm of the lack of oxygen. This one character, Doug, I felt, I felt horrible for because he was just dying. He was just dying. There was no oxygen available for him, and he just, he was so incoherent. And I thought he was just going to lay there and peacefully go. And there came a point where um, Rob... Jason Clark's character said just stay here and wait they're bringing oxygen up I'm going to run down and meet him and we'll be back up here shortly just stay here and the poor thing was so incoherent and so unable to process cognizantly that he just he stood up and he you know was slurring his speech he stood up and rub rub and then he just simply walked off the cliff just simply walked off the cliff and fell to his death. And uh, another person came up to help Jason Clark's character a little later, and Jason Clark was so relieved because he was getting ready to die too, and he didn't want to die alone, of course, and, and he says, thank you so much for coming. He was almost crying because he was relieved that somebody was at least there. Um, it didn't. They didn't know if they were going to make it down, but somebody was there with him and um, uh, it's just such a tall mountain it's just under 30,000 feet high I believe I don't know what that is in kilometers but <laughs> all I know is it's very tall it's like way 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 over it's just I know it's 29 thousand and something tall. I used to think it was only 25, but uh, it's 29,000 something, and it's just not where you want to be. I think what I, I just, yeah, and the pregnant wife, so, so, so sad. Those last couple of phone calls, uh, Kira Knightley and Jason Clark made to each other, it just, I, I just started weeping. It was just really sad. So, yeah. Uh, I think the only thing that made me, that made me feel like it wasn't just a depressing movie is the fact that there were a few survivors. Um, sadly, Josh Brolin's character had such severe frostbite to his face and hands that he lost his hands and I think he had to have lots of his nose amputated although the real guy had extremely like a black nose and there was just a little bit of black makeup on Josh Brolin's nose but the it was just ghastly it was terrible it was, you know, it was a very, very well acted, beautifully rendered movie. Uh, the cinematography was just, like I said, the, the villages up in Tibet, I'm sorry, in Nepal were so beautiful. Just these beautiful, colorful villages, you know, beautiful 
just bursts of colorful buildings in this white ocean of snow. Um, the, the camps, just, just good cinematography. It was directed by, uh, I've already forgotten his name, I've never heard of him before, just like the director of, uh, oh, something I watched very recently where I said, who, who directed this? And I'm like, oh, I've never, oh, The Renovant, I'd never heard of that director either, so, and I will be re reviewing The Renovant too, because I've seen that recently, and that was just amazing. Anyway, that's my review for uh, Everest. As far as uh, what would I give it? Um, I can't say anything less than 10 stars, really. It's a good movie. I didn't... I had that same attitude a lot of people have. I, I felt bad for the characters, but I also felt like they did this to themselves. But that doesn't mean it's a bad movie. Do you know what I mean? It means um, it just means that I felt like the characters brought this tragedy onto themselves in a lot of ways, but I still felt very bad for them. I I don't think anybody really deserves to suffer that horribly. I just feel bad all around, and uh, cinematography, acting, directing, writing, um, everything was beautiful. So it's a great movie. And all my friends, I finally watched it, so that's, and it's a 1996 period piece, so there you have it. 10 out of 10 stars. I highly recommend it for people who love a good tear-jerking, kind of family-orientated true story uh, adventure, really. It's an adventure movie, too. Very adventurous. Okay, that's it for now. We'll see you next time on Period Pieces.